Hi, my name is Vivek Adhikari. I am a English instructor. In today's class, we are going to solve the reading portion of Unit 14, that is tables and charts. So let's begin. All right, we shall now start the reading portion of Unit 14, which is called graphs and charts. So let's begin. There are many ways of presenting information. You know, data is presented in graphs and charts. Have you ever seen such graphs and charts? You must have seen it, you know, seen them. So we use different kind of graphs and charts and among them the first that you commonly find is what is called a bar chart and the second variety of chart that you find often is called pie chart. There is something called graph which is simply a freehand line going up and down along the horizontal and vertical axis. After that comes histogram, which is another fa fancy name for bar chart. You know, bar charts are often called columns. So they are called clustered columns or simply columns. So they are also called clustered columns. Bar charts are just, you know, uh, rectangular objects that you find between the two axes. A pie chart looks like a pie. It's in circular form that's why it's called a pie chart graph a graph is simply a line you know going moving freely in in horizontal and vertical axis now histogram is a fancy name for bar chart now when we think about these charts you know there are primarily two types of charts first is what we call a two-dimensional chart something that can be viewed in a plane another form is called a three-dimensional chart something that is you know projected outwards of the plane. So what is a plane? Plane is nothing but a combination of two directions. So we are talking about two direction x and y, right? So how many different kind of motion is possible? Two different kind of motions are possible. The first one is horizontal motion while the second one is vertical motion. So this thing can either move forward or backward or go upward or downward. So two different kind of motions are possible. That is why it is called a two-dimensional thing so if we talk about adding an extra dimension that would mean some extra movement outside of the plane or maybe inside the plane all right so while drawing graphs and charts if you're, if you're especially using microsoft word you'll find two choices there the first one is a two-dimensional chart or graphs and the second one is a three-dimensional one you can choose any one you know there's no rule like you should choose a two-dimensional thing and not the three-dimensional one you can choose what you like but the point is, you should know how these different graphs and charts are drawn. All right, so we shall begin our study from the bar chart. So this is the bar chart. What is it called? It is called a bar chart. You can see number of teachers by gender, male and female. So this is female category and this is male category, right? Female and male. So how many teachers are female? Considering this, as the female category, we find that there are seven teachers. So altogether, seven teachers in female category. So if you think about the male category, here is the male category using different colors. That means there are altogether 10 male teachers. Seven female teachers and 10 male teachers. And they're represented in x-axis and y-axis. So this is the x-axis. Well, this is the y-axis, you know, and they're represented likewise. This is the reference line. And this is how you draw a bar chart. So what's a bar chart? It is nothing but a combination of rectangular shapes that are drawn between x and y-axis. And that shows the relationship between two or more variables. So we have two different variables, right? We have a variable A followed by a variable B. That means it is showing a relationship between variable A and B. What kind of relationship is there? So that relationship is shown by this bar chart. Now let's study about pie chart. All right, this is the pie chart. This is a pie chart and it represents population of Mustang district. So just by looking at it, we find that there are, you know, 53% of the people are male and female are 47%. So this represents, this part represents the male part, right? While this part in the legend and this part in the pie chart represent the female population. Altogether, what is the total population? So what is the total percentage? 53 added by 47 is 100, right? So the percentage is 100 and the degree is 
360 degrees. So the simple mathematics is in a pie chart, everything, you know, all the data are converted into 360 degree angle. We have just seen, you know, 40% female and 53% female uh, male, they represent the total population. That means, you know, 100% of people are uh, 100% represents the total population. So that 100% is converted into 360 degree and by the help of a protector a pie chart is drawn. So this is the center of the pie chart or center of the circle you know, and angles are drawn. Likewise this plotting is done. And what you see here is what we call a two-dimensional pie chart simply because everything exists in a plane. So we have x and y followed by point of reference and that suggests that this is simply a two-dimensional pie chart. Now let's study about another bar graph. So here we have a bar graph and it is called the title of this is major religions of Nepal. What is it called? It is called a bar graph or clustered columns or histogram. All right so the total number of people or the population is plotted on this side. So this is what we call population on y-axis and on x-axis what is plotted different religions so I'm writing different religions so it is a graph between different religions and population this is the point of reference now this graph simply means that means 2 crore 15 lakh 51,492 people are Hindu while 23 lakhs 96,099 people are Buddhist followed by 11 lakhs 62,370 Islam people followed by 80,000 sorry 8 lakh 71,7169 Kirat people and then comes the Christianity which is 3 lakhs 75,699 and there are people uh, some people who follow Prakriti religion and the total number of people who follow this religion is 1,21,982 and there's a religion called Bon, 13,006 uh, people follow this and 3,214 people follow Jainism, Baha'i people are 1,283 1, and 609 people are Sikh. So, you know, the rectangular area is so less that it cannot even be plotted in this line. So everything is below this is below 50 lakhs so everything is below 50 lakhs uh, and those things you know uh, because a few thousands uh, in terms of 50 lakh is too less so cannot be plotted this is the bar graph that we studied all right a bar graph now we shall study a pie chart right this is the pie chart that we have and it shows the population of nepal in terms of educational level we can simply say that most of the people study primary level and then lower secondary level and then secondary very few people compared to the people who attend primary level pass the slc examination followed by another few chunk of people who go through intermediate level and there's a very few you know a, a less population who opts for graduate studies followed by a handful of people in fact we are talking in terms of lakhs so it could be handful a uh, handful of people who really go into postgraduate level so the pie chart shows the population of Nepal in terms of different educational level passed it illustrates the number of people who passed different educational levels the chart reveals that many people passed the primary level similarly 32 lakh 66,513 people passed the lower secondary level, which is grade 6 to 8. There were 18 lakh 57,368 people who passed the secondary level, which means grade 9 to 10. The people who passed intermediate level or equivalent level, which is also known as, you know, plus 2 level, was 1 lakh 36,448 than people who pass graduate or it is very less than people who pass graduate level which is simply 4,57,744 and when it comes to postgraduate level only 1,50,432 people pass the postgraduate level. So this shows the educational level or the quality of Nepal. This is a two-dimensional pie chart once again. 
because only two axes are used x and y like i said earlier point of reference again and you know by just looking at this pie chart we can find all different kind of information so everything is seen at a glance what does that mean that means you know you can see everything just by looking at it you don't have to really uh, read long paragraphs long boring paragraphs in order to get the information so what significance does a pie chart have you know, it's a graphical tool it is a graphical representation of data but apart from that significance does it carry it is visual first point is that second point is you know everything it's seen at a glance it's very easy all right now we come to the homework section of today's class and your homework is going to be pretty simple all you have to do is simple and fun all you have to do is represent your family's monthly expenditure in a pie chart and interpret it. so this is your homework all you have to do is represent your family's monthly expenditure in a pie chart and analyze it and interpret it so if you don't know how to draw a pie chart you can ask your math teachers uh, if you don't like that idea no worries in another class i will teach you how to draw a pie chart all right so this is your homework try yourself ask people and get to know how to draw a pie chart that is your homework with this we have come to end of today's class if you have any questions or suggestions regarding these video series feel free to write us at learning at thank you